Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Maria Truda, and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Well, last time, we got the final star map, and that means we now know where Ilos is. We can get there, it's gonna be flipping marvellous. But, 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 that might be the point of no return to enter the end game. So, just in case that's true, what we need to do is make sure everybody's nice and happy with us, because uh, there might come a moment where, you know, our crew decides, hey, I'm loyal and I'm going to back you, or no, you didn't do my loyalty mission, so I'm going to stab you in the back. So, uh, okay, let's just check them off here, one by one. Step one, mission. We have found her brother, she is at peace with him, she should be nice and loyal. Number two, Zalbar. His loyalty mission seems to have been tied to the business on Kashyyyk, so he is super chill and happy with me, no trouble there whatsoever. Number three, T3. He's a robot, he doesn't have, you know, any family who we lost and have conveniently resurfaced recently. T3, me and you are cool. Number four, Karth. Okay, this one, um, this one's a bit awkward. So, I am told, uh, yeah, his long-lost son, Dustal, was apparently on Korriban in the Sith Academy. But I didn't know that when I murdered everyone in the Sith Academy. So, I've slightly killed Karth's son. Didn't mean to, but I did. So, that one's not on the table. Number five, Bastila. She's been kidnapped. Can't do anything there. Number six, Jolie, done the business with his friend, may have slightly got his friend executed by handing over incriminating evidence, but Jolie seems happy with my decision, so no trouble there either. And that leaves just a handful more, though this is where things get a bit tricky. So, okay, um, HK, we may have a bit of an issue, actually. You see, I have been building up my repair to try and, you know, get some memories back, but now when I try and tell him I want to give a go at doing that... Commentary. That is unnecessary now, Master. I have been returned to you and my memory core is now fully functional. Statement. My functionality has now been fully restored, Master. I exist to serve Revan as your personal battle droid. In time, my assassination protocol can be restored, and at that point I will once again endeavor to eliminate any meatbag opposition you may have. So as a result of that, he just kicks me out of the conversation. I can't do anything else with him. But his stats appear to be about the same as they ever were, and he doesn't give me any additional conversation. So, okay, I'm guessing you just have to do that before a certain point in the game, like the revelation that you're Revan. And if you don't, you just sort of uh, miss it. So, unfortunately, poor old HK is just going to be like this for the rest of the game, which is a bit of a shame, but what can you do? So that leaves two I might be able to do yet. Kandras, we've never run into anybody, though to be honest, Kandras has kind of stayed on the ship the entire time. And Jahani, we run into that person who tried to buy her, Zor. So I feel like what we need to do is take Kandras and Jahani out for a walk. Okay, we just make them my party and then travel port to port to see if we run into anyone who says, Hey, Kandras, it's me, your mother, Kandora. You never write. You're such a disappointing son. You didn't even come to my birthday. And then we'll have to go to her birthday and make small talk with all of her bridge team. It's going to be marvellous. I assume that's what his uh, loyalty mission is going to be. And Jahani, yeah, we need to find Zor and convince her that she wants to strike him down in anger so she'll go to the dark side and be my awesome dark side cat girlfriend. It's going to be marvellous. So, okay, that's what we're going to be starting with today. Though we definitely need to do a bit of levelling up of old Kandras, because yes, he's not in, um, he's not in great shape right now, though, to be honest, he's... Yeah, in that armour, actually, his dexterity is so bad... I mean, why not just make Kandras like a melee lad? I feel like he'd be better as a melee lad, to be honest. Here we go, we'll give him a Junta Paul's Blade. That's a fun little weapon for him to have. I mean, screw it, I'll give him a melee focus, why not? I think he's like a... he's a soldier, isn't he? Yeah, he's a soldier, so he's gonna be swimming in feet, so it doesn't matter if this isn't a good feat. He gets, like, feats constantly, so it's fine. So, more feats down over here, lovely. Just keep that ticking in the right direction. Attributes. Give him strength. Why not? I see no reason why not at all. And then give him two-handed bonus, because seriously, you have just got feats coming out of your ears, buddy. And with that maxed out, I guess we'll give you... Yeah, Flurry. Let's just get that up to max too, because that's really good. 
Then just slip him, yeah, a bit of a strength modifier right over there. He's already got an energy shield, but he could have a better one just in case. Absolutely lovely. He's got Mandalorian battle armor, which is pretty damn solid. Can't have any of that. So yeah, in the end, he's got himself 19 plus 4. So we could ideally do with another plus 1. But defense only 21, which is pretty darn poor, it must be said. But 238 vitality is a good amount. So... Okay, that there, that's going to be all A-OK. -okay. So you're now going to be a frontliner. Marvellous. And Candrus's mother hasn't approached us yet. So, okay, keep on keeping on. We're just going to go around the houses a bit until something happens. Oh, hello. On Korriban, we've got somebody. Ah, so we meet again, Candrus. It has been quite a long time. Joggy? Okay, it took a while, but we got ourselves a bloody Candorus. So, okay, this is Candorus' long-lost brother, Jargi, who's really annoyed that Candorus never came to see him in the play he was in. Because, okay, he wasn't the lead, but he still had several lines and multiple scenes. It was a big deal for Jargi. Why did you not show up, Candorus? Oh, there he is. There's the only Irish man in space in the background. You're my favourite character. Please come and be on my crew. He, he was a warrior under my command up to the Battle of Alfir. But I thought... You thought I was dead, didn't you? You thought all of us that you had set on that attack had perished. You sent us to die in a foolish attack, while you directed your forces elsewhere. You broke from the battle plan and let us die for it, so that you could have the honor of being the first to kill the enemy commander. Ah, so Candorus is all about honor and war and diddly diddly dee, but now he's going to be confronted with the fact that, yes, his stupid, dumb, honor, murder, kill everyone plan, actually, you know, he got his men killed. It was dumb. And now he's going to be called out on his utter BS, which generally doesn't happen because generally everyone ends up dead. Actually, Candorus, you may think you're a badass warrior, but as a leader of men, you might be completely cocking hopeless. I... I did what was prudent at the time. If I had not done it, the battle would have... The battle would have been won anyway. I am tired of your excuses, Candorus. I have spent years tracking you down since the clans were banished, and I will not rest until I've had my vengeance. Okay, so we've got ourselves a duel to be done here. Marvellous. So, uh, I mean, to be honest, I should stay out of this one, because uh, probably honour on every side demands this be a one-on-one -on -one thing, right? I challenge you, Candorus. I challenge you to fight the fight you fled that day above Althea in the doomed seas of Tatooine. I will be waiting for you. I have spread the news of the challenge since I learned you had landed on this world. All the surviving Mandalorian clans know of what I do here, and that we shall meet on Tatooine to settle this debt of vengeance once and for all. If you fail to meet me there, you shall be stripped of all honor and forever cast out of our society. It will be you and me alone in the Doom Seas of Tatooine. A final battle that can only end in death. I shall be waiting for you there, Candorus. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Um, I physically can't do that. There's no way to send out Candorus by himself. I can go out by myself, but Candorus, he kind of needs, you know, an adult to accompany him. So, okay, I'm guessing that that shook you up a bit, Candorus, mate. I've been given a challenge I can't ignore. We've got to go to the Dune Seas of Tatooine so I can find Jaggi and kill him for his insult to me. Okay, when you say insult, this wasn't really an insult. This was just, you know, consequences to your bad actions. Also, I just want to say, a lot of you have been saying in the comments that actually I'm the real villain of the story right now. No, you know who the real villain is? The real villain is the person at Bioware who decided to add this damn shooting sequence that spawns in constantly when you're moving from planet to planet. And it's always the same, there's no variety or anything, it's just always the same bloody thing over and over. There's the real villain of KOTOR for ya. Okay, made it to Tatooine, and you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm going to use this as an excellent opportunity to try out my meleeing, all right? I've got these two lovely lightsabers uh, right over here. Which one was... Hang on, which one was the... Okay, this seems to be the stronger one. So maybe we'll put that in uh, in one hand, which is the short lightsaber. Okay, short lightsaber in the off. That's fine. So, okay, we're going to try out my new awesome lightsabers uh, just so I know what I'm doing. So, uh, yes, this will be a good test for all of that. Okay, big old pile of speeders outside, but to be honest, those are the same speeders from 
the last idiot who challenged me out in the June Sea. So, okay. I guess we may as well just uh, head into the desert, see what we can find. We've got ourselves a Candorus here, so, I mean, he's got to be around here somewhere, presumably. Oh, here we go. Someone's approaching us. Uh, okay, so down by the, uh, the sand crawler. Ah, so you managed to come after all. I see you brought friends. You brought some of your own as well. Ha! Indeed I did. I foresaw that you might need help, so I arranged a distraction. Okay, so, yeah, he kind of works for me. Oh, I'm looking so evil these days. Uh, you talk too much, do too little, let's get down to the murder. We both cheated, so it's still fair. Big words from such a small human. But I know why he brought you here, and you shall regret his choice. Enough of this talk, Joggy. Let's do what we came here to do. Okay, so, yeah, do it. Murder. Activate murder mode. And you shall all die. Okay, so... Well, for some reason, we're not... We're not... Yes. We're not fighting? Should we be fighting? I feel like we should be fighting. Um... I mean, okay. Should we go... There we go. Let's go fight. So, uh, we're gonna Rodin Thug, uh, and we got him. Now, uh, you know what I think is fair? I think you, buddy, should be taking on this guy, and he's... He doesn't seem to be fighting, which is a little bit on the weird side. Yeah, just go and flurry him, because your stats right now have already been boosted. So that's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. Meanwhile, I'll go have a fight with this lad. No, not Critical Strike. Bloody hell, and... Okay, Critical Strike's all I've got. I'll just kill him. That's all absolutely fine. And yes, uh, Jahani, you heal if need be. Everyone's going to be, there's a nice kill. You get over there, stasis him, and then follow up by just attacking him a little bit. That's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. And then I'll just go into attacking him right now. And we'll just keep an eye on all the rest of my friends. So, there we go. How are you getting on over there? He's... I'm not sure how you... Oh, he's already dead. Okay, so that there, that worked just fine. I think someone might have done a bit more stasis than I was expecting, actually. Do you have anything good in him, by the way? Like some money or anything like that? 14 credits. I'm going to be honest, you may have slightly, um... Oversold him there, Candorus. I... I think this has affected me in ways I, I didn't anticipate. I think I'll need time to sort things out. Thanks for what you did. Whatever your intentions might have been. I just need time. Okay, so Candorus is... I'm not really happy, to be honest, but... I mean, the job's done, so that's nice. Right, journal just says give him time, so I think we're done with what we need to do with him. Lovely. This thing with Jaggi, I... I don't know. Give me some time and I'll be able to sort this out on my own. Is there something else you wanted? Okay, so back on the ship, he's still not too talkative, so maybe we need to give him a bit more time yet. Though there may also be another conversation about, uh, yes, working for Davik. Working for Davik was like driving a spike through the side of your head. Sure, you got something new in there, but in the end, you've lost something as well. Beating up people who wouldn't or couldn't pay, strong-arming his competitors, killing who he said. It was busy work, nothing decent. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you killed people, killed some competitors, apparently. I've killed many people. I can't say I'm proud of it, but I have. Criminals, competitors, businessmen, police, women, children. Jedi were a better challenge. But they hardly ever poked around in the Undercity. Until you came along. But I never wanted to challenge you. Never felt the need. Maybe I knew I couldn't win. Just like all those years ago. Okay, that vaguely implies he knew I was Revan all along, which I don't think was the case. But yeah, I'd have just kicked your ass again, mate. Maybe you would have. But you're not who you were back then. I can tell. You've changed. And maybe I have to. I remember a time when I could do anything I wanted. Kill, maim, murder, it was all the same to me. But now, now that I am older, I can look back and regret. Okay, so he's starting to actually feel a bit of uh, guilt, perhaps. I look back and regret all the chances I had as a warrior. And then all the chances I've had since then. I, I shouldn't be getting like this. Not when so many other things are happening, but... It feels like... Like something has changed inside and I don't know what it is. Ah, this is unbecoming a warrior. Let's get on with everything before I start getting sentimental or something. 
Is there something else you want to know? Okay, I'm not 100% sure whether he's feeling guilt for all the people he killed or guilt because he didn't do enough killing. Honestly, with Candrus, it could be either. Well, with him taken care of, we can travel around with HK because HK is the best. So out we go with HK47. And if we're very lucky... Oh, oh, we've got... Yes! Lovely. An extended black screen. That's always a good sign. So, hello, Zor. Get her, man. But remember, don't kill her. Okay, so... Just to be clear, you've decided to ambush the two Jedi Masters, one of whom is the Dark Lord of the Sith, and uh, an assassin robot with uh, yourself and two Rodians. That was, um, that was your plan, was it? Okay, so, Jahani, this one here, this one's yours. So get everybody up to, uh, yes, being ridiculously mega badass. I'll be taking uh, some speed uh, as well. You just start, yes, uh, stunning these guys. I want these guys taken out as far as possible. But the main guy is Jahani's. All right, this is her fight, damn it. So there we go. Now you just get over there and you can just, uh, yeah, hit him with a, a normal attack and then just start wailing on him. That's all absolutely a-okay. We'll take care of the other two. So yeah, I'll just kill this guy. No need to actually attack him or anything. I'm still using lightsabers, aren't I? Yes, yes I am. So, you just get on with that, and you just, yes, I hit this guy with a stun ray, and then normal attacks is fine. So, uh, we'll just, you know, keep an eye on what's going on the rest of the battlefield. So, there we go, round the outside. Hit him with a stick, lovely. Okay, so you're nice and dead. Then we just need to take you out. Just one kill, just do a good job there. Then we just want to back off, and Jahani can take care of this. Honestly, uh, yeah, I feel like actually, um, maybe what we do is, uh, would you like to just go? I'd like you to not do anything. This is Jahani's fight. I feel like it's important that she's the one that does this. So, uh, nobody do anything. Nobody target anybody. Jahani, this one's on you. Now, you do have the ability to uh, slow him. We don't normally, uh, use that, but, I mean, you know, you can. So, just do... Never mind, everyone, everyone decided to get involved. Um, I feel like he might be about to beg for mercy, because his health bar's gone back to, uh, back to blue. Now, if he does, uh, that's excellent, because the answer is no. No mercy. None at all. <laughs> you seem to have defeated me, Kev, there, worm. But I'll have the last laugh in the end. What do you mean? Okay, and don't listen to him. He doesn't have long to harney. Hmm... Okay, let's hear what he's got to say, at least. You may have killed me today, but I had the pleasure of killing off your species. Not everyone who fought alongside the Mandalorians did it for their stupid concept of honor. <clears throat> Some of us just did it for the pleasure. The pleasure of seeing your world burn. You, you animal, you wretch. I'm beyond your petty vengeance now, girl. You can never have your revenge. Oh, yes. Yes, he can. Kill him right now, Jahani. Do it. Give in to the dark side. Give in to your hatred. No. No, I cannot give in to my anger. I will not give him the satisfaction of making me that way. Worm, I killed your people on Cather in the sky. <clears throat> on the ground. In their homes. I hunted them down like the animals they were, <laughs> just to see them burn. But the treacherous beasts fought back and left me with injuries that meant I could never fight again. <laughs> or so they thought. Do it. Kill him. We should just kill you now. Come on, Jahani. You know you want to do this. Dark side evil can't go, friends. <laughs> but you won't. You're the cowardly type, all of you. You don't have the guts to finish me now. No, I will not give it to him. I ended up in the lower city of Taurus, and what did I find? <laughs> A few of those stinking beasts living there. The male was easy enough to best, but the females proved elusive. I didn't know what happened to them after I killed the male. <coughs> Until I saw this cursed woman on the auction block. 
But then the Jedi came and ruined everything before I could have my revenge. <coughs> you... you killed my father. You killed my people. You, you treat us like animals. You deserve to die. Good. Good. Give in to your anger. Quit your whining. Don't give in. No, give in. Oh, bloody hell. How am I going to... What's the option? Yeah, no whining, just murder. Give in and embrace your hate. You are no better than me. You are nothing. I... 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 Yes, do it. Kill him, Jahani. Give in. You... You will die for what you have done. Oh, flip me, she actually did it. She's actually going to do it. And you killed him with a kick to the face. That was... That was pretty badass. I'm kind of surprised she actually gave in there. I mean, marvellous. I thought she was going to resist. She was just going to be a goody two-shoes. Okay, now, 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 now. Do we have a dark side Jahani at this point? Let's just have a very quick chat with her. How are you feeling? Are you feeling like, you know, Sithy by any chance? I felt satisfaction taking revenge for my people like that. But, but I should not have let my anger consume me so. That's nah, fine. You did the right thing. Giving to your dark side urges more often. It could be great. We could be such a good power couple. No, I didn't. I let my anger and passion consume me and did something rash. Something which leads me down the path to the dark side. But I recognize this. And I am truly regretful that I committed this act. I shall not let it happen again. I suppose I was fortunate that, in this case, he was deserving of such an end. We should continue on our way. I do not want to linger around here anymore. Okay, I feel like me and Jahani are just not on the same page when it comes to murder. Me and her, no, it's not It's not quite going to work out, is it? Despite the fact that, you know, she was dark side and keeps doing dark things, she is bloody determined to go back to the light. Okay, no new conversations from either of them. But, 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 my favourite character of all... Jolie Bindle apparently has something to say about his adventuring days. Yes, yes, I was an adventurer. Happy now? I wasn't even done with my Jedi training back then. I had a full head of hair and an eagerness to see absolutely everything. Sound familiar? The Council was never happy with willful, brash Jolie Bindle, you see. Even less so when I began my smuggling career. I was about to say I used to be a smuggler, but no, no I didn't. That was just a fake backstory invented by, you know, the council. But I guess I can't know something about smuggling because, uh, well, actually, do I? Like, is my knowledge of smuggling just the council's understanding of what smuggling is, which might be completely... I should try being a smuggler because I might have no idea what it's actually like. Don't look at me like that, damn it. I wasn't always the wrinkled coot I am now, you know. I can still fight too. So wipe off that smirk I see there. At the time, the Yukata system was interdicted by its own king. He preferred to keep his people starving and poor. All the better to oppress them. The Senate was trying to negotiate a peace. But they were getting nowhere as usual. I decided I wasn't going to wait. I found myself a ship and a partner. And we began smuggling food and supplies to the Yukata citizenry through the blockade. Okay, pretty badass. Oh, it was. I was a half-decent pilot in those days, and with the Force guiding me, we made it through some tough spots nobody else would have. Okay, not just a smuggler, a pilot too. Pilot, smuggler, several other things too. Or did you suppose I was always a crotchety hermit? Okay, Jolie, you are just magnificent and I love you. Well, we didn't buy all the equipment per se. Some were happy to donate goods. Some we just, uh knew had more than they could use. Jolie is just the best. Stole is such a harsh word. They would have donated those goods readily enough if they were compassionate. I considered it a tax on the greedy. We only got caught once. A lone Yukatish frigate shot us down and forced a crash landing. I thought the force had abandoned me, as I remember. Okay. Well, as it happens, getting shot down turned out to be very fortunate. That day was the day I... Ooh. Yes. Well, that... That was the day I met my wife. Oh. You sound kind of sad about that, and... Uh, 
I'm guessing she's not waiting for you in a hut on Kashyyyk. It's all right. When you're digging through the trash, you shouldn't be surprised when you encounter something unpleasant. I... If it's all the same to you, I prefer to stop talking now. My mouth is starting to draw flies. Jolie is just the best character in the game and I love him so much. Okay, I've stepped outside and back inside. He might be willing to talk about the wife immediately. I don't want to talk about that. Okay, so... Sorry, I kind of want to hear. I don't really want to be rude to Jolie. He's awesome. So... Okay, maybe if I'm polite, he'll just open up a bit by himself. Maybe, but I doubt it. I'm made stubborn that way. Okay, he's not willing to talk just yet. What if I'm more rude? So, uh, spit it out already. Now that's a unique method of getting someone to talk. Thunder about like a bamf in a circuit shop. Does that work for you often? Let me tell you something. Once you've lived as many years as I have, you'll have yourself a long, long list of memories. If you're lucky, most of them will be good. If you're not, some will be bad. If you're really unlucky, some will be so bad you never want to be reminded of them again, ever. You'll go far away to a place that doesn't hold any memories at all. And there you'll be happy just to forget and be forgotten. Right. So, it sounds like he might not be opening up about that, potentially. <laughs> Partly. Maybe. I doubt I could ever explain it to you fully, even if I wanted to. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in love? Truly in love, I mean, and not simple infatuation. Well, given the Jedi stole my previous life from me, um, I don't really know. In universe, I might have had a partner, but you know, you guys flipping erase my memory, so I don't cocky know, actually. Exactly. You're still at the beginning of your life. There will be men in your life, perhaps many men. But if you're fortunate, you'll find love once. The Jedi, with their damnable sense of over-caution, would tell you love is something to avoid. Thankfully, anyone who's even partially alive knows that's not true. Okay, so I'm getting dating advice from an old Jedi. And to be honest, I'm more into, you know, the cat girl who's over there. But I'm not really convinced she's into me. And why not? All this nonsense about avoiding love is so much foo-foo. I shouldn't be the only one who realizes that. Love doesn't lead to the dark side. Passion can lead to rage and fear and can be controlled. But passion is not the same thing as love. Controlling your passions while being in love, that's what they should teach you to beware. But love itself will save you, not condemn you. Uh, listen to me go on as if I had all the answers. What do I know of love anymore? I'm just a lonely old man who's not even a Jedi. Okay, Jolie's just the best character in the game and I love him so damn much. Love causes pain, certainly. Inevitably, love is going to lead to as much sorrow and regret as it does joy. I suppose there are perfect eternal loves out there, but I haven't seen any. And how do you deal with the bad part of love is what determines your character. What determines the dark side's hold over you. Okay, so, yeah, what are we going to do with... Yes, your wife. Let's get back to your wife. I haven't changed my mind. I'm still not going to talk about it. You go and find your own love if you want to know so badly. I'll tell you one thing. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you and the one you love simply aren't meant to be together. The trick is to know when that is. To know when it's time to fight and when it's time to part ways. <laughs> There I go, waxing philosophical again. Somebody blast me already. Let's get going before I start talking in riddles, damn it. Jolie is just so good. I love him so damn much. My wife's name was Nayama. She was the Yukatis enforcer who shot me out of the sky, if you remember. Okay, so I've been inside and outside a couple of times. He's finally starting to open up here, so... Yeah, he was also talking previously about uh, the war that we heard about before, Exile Corner. So, Jedi felt dark side in, what, maybe a couple of decades ago or something, when this guy was, uh, was young, shortly before the current Sith War. So, okay, I'm guessing, oh, right, so I'm guessing your wife became a Sith, right. My wife had plenty to do with the war. Upon meeting her, I knew right away that she was strong in the Force. That's why she was able to shoot me down. 
Nayama was a marvel of a woman. Fiery, determined, smart. She dragged me to the capital and foiled three of my attempts to escape prison. Oh, and that body. Okay, no, 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 Joni's amazing. Just let him talk about whatever the hell he wants. Well, yes, that. Needless to say, I eventually won her over. That was after I kidnapped her upon being broken out of the Yukata's prison, mind you. But, uh, that's another story entirely. At any rate, I wanted to train her in the Jedi way. The Council refused my request, naturally. I was still a Padawan at the time. I was an experienced Padawan, surely, but not yet ready to be a full Jedi, and certainly not ready to train another, especially not one so old as my wife. Oh, you just flipping decided to train her anyway, and I'm guessing it went a bit, uh, a bit wrong. But yeah, what was her take on all of this? Nayama was intrigued by the idea of becoming a Jedi. She liked the idea of power too much, perhaps, but I certainly didn't see that at the time. I believed in her and trained her in secret. I ignored her willful nature. I loved her too much to see fault in her. And she loved me too. I know she did. At the time, our love was a shared bliss. Better than anything I had known before or since. Yeah, I'm guessing she fell to the dark side. She joined the other side in the Exar Kun War, didn't she? Exar Kun is what happened. Nayama was inspired by Exar's promises of a new golden age. She wanted to join him. She came to me, pleading with me to throw aside what she called the decrepit trappings of the Jedi. To join her in Exar's war. Okay, and that didn't exactly reinforce your confidence in the Jedi, did it? Because you seem pretty down on the council. You've kind of, you know, suggested you're not really keen on them several times, in fact. So, uh, yeah, what happened next, buddy? I pleaded with her to reconsider to think about all that she was throwing away. To think about what she would become. She would have none of it. Finally, in frustration, she attacked me. She drew her lightsaber and attempted to strike me down. It was a scene being repeated everywhere throughout the galaxy. Pupil against master. In my case, it was a long and terrible battle, but I defeated her. Aw, oh, Jolie. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I like you. I wish you had more of a happy ending. No, no. I had her at my mercy, disarmed and defenseless. She looked up at me and she knew. She knew I couldn't do it. Right, so... What, she just ran, knowing you wouldn't shoot her in the back or anything? But I should have. Sometimes I convince myself otherwise, but it's no use. She had fallen to the dark side when she raised her saber against me, and I let her go. To my shame, she went on to kill many Jedi during the war, until she herself was slain in the final battle. I grieved for her death. Inevitable as it was, even as the Jedi Council put me on trial for my actions once the war was over. Okay, so, yeah, that was a bit mean of the Council, but then again, you did kind of train her against their, uh, against their orders, so I suppose that's... Yeah, not a good situation for you in general, I say. I had trained Nayama against their wishes. I had failed to kill her when I had the chance she went on to kill others. Not to mention that I had remained a Padawan throughout the war. A formality, perhaps, but with the trial, it had to be decided if I was worthy to become a Jedi at all. It was a travesty, of course. I told you that even the Jedi were capable of great injustices, didn't I? Okay, so completely unfair trial. Got you. And yes, they kind of stole my entire pass from me. That's true, they did. But I deserve to be tried. They found me innocent. Even though I deserved every punishment and more, they let me go. Mitigating circumstances, they said. I deserved compassion, they said. They said I had learned wisdom the hard way. For all I had done during the war, they wished to raise me to full Jedi status at long last. That, that was when the Jedi left me. That was when they failed me. Right, they were... They were too compassionate. I see, he's not angry they found him guilty. He's angry they found him innocent. Okay, so there was no element of selfishness that made you happy you got off in the slightest then? No, oh, maybe you don't at that. They may have been able to forgive me. I could never forgive myself. Okay, even after all of that, you still think love is worth the risk? Yes, I do, I suppose. Does that surprise you? Uh, 
It is all so long ago, lost in the winds, I suppose. Nobody cares what an old man believes anymore, do they? Let's continue on with the task at hand. I would prefer to think of the present today. All right. I think that might be his entire backstory, so... Oh, Jolie, you're magnificent and I love you, and I'm sorry you had a big old tragic backstory. On the plus side, we don't have to hunt her down, because she's definitely already dead. She's definitely already dead, right? Okay, there might be more from him yet, and I'm deeply worried his wife might be going to show up at some point or another. Okay, I've been around everyone, making sure everyone's fun as they should be. No one else seems to have anything else to say. I'm pretty sure I've now done everybody's companion quest, apart from Karth, because I murdered his son by mistake. So, I think we're pretty much as prepared as we can be. So, alright then. Galaxy map, it's flipping time. Starforge, here we flipping come. <laughs> You are strong, child. But I will break you. I'll never fall to the dark side. <laughs> you think torture will turn me, Malak? You are a fool. Torture? No, dear Bastula. You misunderstand. This is but a taste of the dark side to whet your appetite. When you finally swear loyalty to me, it will be willingly. Never. <laughs> Such resolve in your words, but I see the truth in your heart. The dark side calls to you, Bastula. You hunger to taste it. Become my apprentice, and all its power can be yours. <laughs> Okay, it's powered by a star. Gotcha. A star forge. I've never seen anything like it. I'm transmitting these coordinates to Admiral Dodonna. It'd be a quick strike by the Republic and cripple the Sith fleet. Message is away. Now we can just wait for the Republic to show up. We should be safe here. We're outside their sensor range. Small vanguard of Sith fighters coming in hard. Someone needs to get on those gun turrets. Oh, not take again. Oh, out. bloody hell, fine. Seriously, I've got pretty good at this, actually. I can take these guys out in a matter of cocky seconds, so... All right, fine. Please let this be the last damn time. And please tell me this didn't come back in KOTOR 2. Oh, uh, we've got problems. We've flown in some kind of disruptor field. All my instruments are jammed. We've got massive overloads in all systems. I'm picking up a single planet in this system. I'll try and put us down there. Hold on. This may be a rough landing. Ah, that's why this place is a secret. We're not the first people that stumbled across it, but everyone who accidentally comes into the system ends up crashed here. Gotcha. I'm guessing I'm in a ship graveyard right now. Whew. Talk about your rough landings, Karth. What's the matter? You're flying like you've been on an all-night Theresian Ale drinking binge. That disruptor field fried our stabilizers. We're lucky we made it down in one piece. But if I can't find the salvage to make repairs, I won't even be able to get the Ebonhawk airborne again. During our rather rapid descent, I noticed the hulls of many crashed ships scattered across the landscape. Perhaps the parts you need can be found among the wreckage. The Cathar's right. This planet's a technological graveyard. I saw dozens of downed ships out there. 
That disruptor field must have wiped them all out. But where could it be coming from? Even if we get the stabilizers fixed, we have to find and disable the source of that disruptor field before we can take off. Otherwise, we'll just end up crashing again. Okay, so... Uh, ah, you just sent a message saying, Hey, Republic, why don't you bring all your ships here into the system that fries the ships and makes them... Yeah, I could see that would be a problem, though. Yeah, more important question. Why could on a Malik's ships just, you know, ignore the damn thing? They must have some kind of protection against it, but the Republic fleet won't. We have to find a way to disable that disruptor field, or the Sith will slaughter them. T3's picking up massive power fluctuations on the ship's sensors. They seem to be coming from some type of large stone structure to the east. It looks like some kind of ancient temple. Okay, so... Yes, that's right, Bastila, though presumably she's upon... Well, actually, I was about to say she's upon the Starforge, but we just saw her in a vision, which maybe my character saw too, I'm not sure. Yeah, inside, like, a temple. So she might be there too. So, yeah, no point getting the stabilizers till we can actually take off, otherwise they're just decorative, so... Sure, what about Bastila? Do we know anything about her? We haven't forgotten about her, but we can't do her much good stuck down here. We have to help ourselves before we can help her. I only hope we're not too late. Bastila has been Malak's prisoner for a long time. If he can turn her to the dark side, she will join him and the Sith will be invincible. Well, don't worry, I had a vision of her like two and a half minutes ago. She was fine. So, it's all gonna be okay. And it doesn't actually matter because, yeah, I'm stronger than Malik anyway, so we're golden. I remember, though I hoped you would not be so quick to embrace the being you once were. If Bastila feels as you do, then she is lost to us, Revan. Okay, so, yeah, if need be, I can take them- oh. Oh, is that the final boss? Is it two versus one, Bastila or Malik? Because, to be honest, I'm not good at crowd control. That's the one thing I'm pretty poor at, so... Yeah, that's not gonna be good, actually. Let us hope it does not come to that. Well, if Bastil is on the Starforge like you think, Jolie, then we can't rescue her until we disable that disruptor field. The sooner we investigate that temple to the east, the better. We can probably find the wreckage of a downed ship along the way. And if we're lucky, we can salvage some stabilizers from it to get off this planet. I hope everything works out as smooth as you make it sound, Karth. Well, so do I, Mission. So do I. Okay, handful of dark side points right there. We're getting close to the end of the game here, so... Uh, I kind of want to be right down to the bottom of the bar before this is all over, so hopefully we can pull that one off. Well, nothing to do but head outside and start scouting the place out, I suppose, though... Uh, yeah, okay. This here, we're in the end game now, so... Uh, who's my ultimate team? Obviously, Jahani. Jahani's been with me this whole time. She's amazing. Then... Uh, you know what? I think it's time for Chewie to come back along too. Zalbar's great. I love him. He also provides me with plenty of skills. All right. He's got 10 million skills because if I just bring along Joe Lee, we have basically got no one who can do any good skill stuff. Zalbar is an excellent skill user together with just whacking people with a stick ludicrously hard. So I'll stay at the back with the guns. You two on the front lines. All right, this here, this is my ultimate dream team. Let's go. And here we go. Lovely, nice beach for us to uh, sit on right here, though, I'm guessing. Yeah, Chewy, you've got some leveling up to do, including... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pile on the strength, buddy. And just look at that, too. Right there, get all your skills up. So if we run into any computers or robots or mines, you are golden. Now, he's currently at 26 strength with a plus 8. So, okay, hang on. So, okay, right now you got... Yes, that's with a plus 2 on your strength off your hands. But Jahani's got a plus 4. So that should definitely move over to uh, move over to him. So, yeah, you have the Genohadrian. Let's get you up to... Oh, that's ludicrous and I love it. That's just magnificent. And you can just have uh, the plus two. So a little bit better, but it's more important that Chewie, given he's way more about the strength. He needs as much strength as possible because that's controlling his chance to hit as well as damage. And yes, the blade right now is uh, 6 to 16. Do we have better than that? Because honestly, we still might not do. No, we'll leave him with the ceremonial blade. That's already pretty darn good because, yeah, 19 to 29... That's solid. It's a good weapon. The Naga Blade comes with a bit of poison, but honestly, it's nothing spectacular. 
and he just can't wear anything on his face because Wookiees are very fussy about armour. Though he does have plus dexterity in his little implant right now, so... Okay, we must have something better than that. Awareness plus one, immunity to critical hits. Constitution plus four! Oh, now that's wow. 288, because... Uh, yeah, his defense is abysmal. His defense is just flipping awful. But with plus seven to constitution, he's going to be fine. He's going to be just fine. And you know what? Given his defense is so low, yeah, just pile on a bit of toughness right there. That's got to be the right way to go. Marvelous. So uh, 300 vitality and he's getting reduction in incoming damage. So uh, Chewy, I believe in you. You can flip and do this. All right. So uh, all right, we got ourselves. Oh, we've got a Gizka. Okay, can we adopt him? Because I'm going to be honest, I've kind of been feeling a bit lonely on the ship since we lost the gears cut. Alright, I regret selling them to that guy. Because, oh, this is nice. This is a lovely place. Oh, that's a massive ass ship in the background. Wow, that's a big ass ship. Okay, so we got ourselves uh, some lovely water right over here. Whack on the old speed. Uh, have a bit of a loopsy roundy. Make sure we don't, you know, miss any hidden chests or anything. Uh, but for the most part... Okay, so I fought my way to Veermeyer. We're under control. Everything's fine. That's... Oh, yeah. We're on Veermeyer. Okay, so this will be the point where we have to do the Rex choice. Hopefully, everyone's going to behave and back down if I decide to do anything bad. Because, you know, I've done all of their loyalty missions. So hopefully, everybody stays on side no matter what happens next. Right, keep the speed moving on and... Okay. We've got... Ooh! It's a you! It's one of the old people! The builders! The architects! Whatever you guys are! So... Okay. Some of you are flipping... Alive, as it turns out. And I'm guessing... They've got a name. Did we know they were called Rakatan? I'm not sure I knew they were called Rakatan. So... Okay, uh, begin the buffing. Chewy, you just head forward and start, yeah, critical striking them. I need to kind of uh, get back, actually, because uh, seriously, this is not really so much my, uh, my thing. Uh, so we'll just start taking care of all of this. And once you're done with that, you just get to the back and keep them busy, if you'd be so kind. I'll just focus on uh, all of this nonsense. So, oh, there she goes with the big old leap. Right, so now we just start shooting and... Well, someone's tossing a lot of grenades, and uh, actually, you know what? If you guys are nice and busy, no need to stun. Just uh, focus on uh, all of this, if you'd be so kind, and job done. So now we've got new friends. You've defeated the murderous animals. We thank you, human, for saving us. Okay, who are you and where did you come from? And yeah, they kind of attacked me, and if we'd known you were there, I would have waited a couple of minutes. Yes, let's just be a dick for no reason. And if you'd waited for a better opportunity, yes. But then we would have been in danger. But I can see your point. You're smart as well as valorous. We thank you for saving us. Right, who are you and why are you here precisely? We crashed here when our mining survey vessel encountered some strange sort of energy field. Uh, okay, so you were just scouting the place out, then you crashed. Which is very convenient for the Sith for keeping their secret base secrets. So, they've crashed here, but there's more of them. Where's the rest of your buddies? And uh, they've been killed by the locals. Some of them tried to swim to another island. Uh, haven't heard from them in days. Okay, so life's not good for you and yours right now. Gotcha. Well, they've just naffed off somewhere. Marvellous. Not sure where they've gone, to be honest. Are they hiding on our ship? Okay, we might be giving them a lift back to the Republic later. I'm not sure. Now, okay. Any more news from any of you lot? Not so much yet. Just keep the old uh, speed up. Right, so we got ourselves builders here, though. Hello over there. Yes, let's just try opening fire. How tough are you guys? And the answer is uh, not so tough, though. Ooh. Okay, several of them are coming in. Cancel everything that I'm doing right now. And toss, like, one concussion grenade. See how tough they are in terms of all the rest of it. And go! Okay, a lot of them are going to toss grenades. Got it. Get around the back and now just start uh, shooting. Rapid shot. No, that's a warrior. Rapid shot's what I'm doing. Then I just shot you. Then I just shot you and... Okay, so it turns out I'm actually quite a badass. Uh, so that's just marvellous. But they definitely hurt my team. This is... Uh, this is not nothing. Okay, we need to treat these guys with uh, respect. Because... Oh, I've not got a great healer with me. 
yeah, Jahani's not got much in the way of uh, force power. And Zalbar's got a lot of bloody health that needs to be topped up. And he's going to take damage. Oh, this team is uh, in some ways not ideal. And also, we got ourselves a branching path here. Okay. Um, the temple's over there. So this seems like the wrong way to go. So that's the way we're going to be going, obviously. So that goes to the North Beach. Okay, let's just make sure we understand what's going on where before we make any commitments here. Because... Uh, well, so far, no one's been willing to even talk to me. Okay, nobody has said a word to me. There's a Giska. Giska don't need to be murdered. And we've got around here. Temple exterior. Okay, so that's the temple. We probably want to go there last, presumably. Ooh, nice view of our ship. And aha! That beach will lead up to this ship. Okay, so... Logically, therefore, go to the beach. Let's get the parts first, because we did say get them on the way. So let's head to the other beach, see if we can find a ship that contains the stabilizers we need. So uh, the moment the field's down, we can take off. Because if the field goes off, yeah, Malik might be alerted to our presence. We're going to want to act fast at that point. Right, so down to the beach. And yes, as I suspected, we're now much closer to some big... Uh-oh. That's not just a big ship, that's... Oh, that's less good, actually. Ooh, they're speaking. Okay, we're not here for battle. We bring you an invitation from the one great champion of Rakatar. Okay, so... Who are you guys? Because, well... I don't know why they had their robots not use their name, but whatever. The Builders. But now they're just sort of uh, here living in a shanty town on the beach, which is, uh, you know, not great for them. Yeah, just fill me in. What's going on precisely? You understand these aliens? Of course. You must have come here and learned their language in your search for the secrets of the Starforge, back when you were still Revan. Ah, I got my memories back, so now I remember I speak the language, which I didn't earlier. So you have strange magics and weapons to slaughter our raiding parties. Uh, you have bathed in the blood uh, of fierce warriors. Your parents skill in battle have impressed the one. He wishes an audience with you. A great honour. Come with us. Uh, we'll take you to him. I'm going to be honest. I was just here to scavenge a part out of the ship on the beach. But, I mean, sure. Why not? I don't have to come with you. Maybe I want to come with them. I mean... I'd rather know what was going on before I commit one way or the other. And he's the leader of the tribe, great champion. He has feasted on the flesh of many foes. Come with us. Okay, you're not selling it. To be honest, you're really not selling it right now. Oh, go on. I'll go and say hello because I'd like to know what's going on before I decide whether or not I'm killing every single one of you. And into their little, yeah, beachside property we go. Oh, this feels like a death arena. This is definitely a death arena. I was hoping to have a nice chat, but instead, maybe not so much. This is... Uh, okay. Oh, he knows who I am. Revan, somehow I knew we'd meet again. Even when you vanished, I knew you would not forget the vow you swore to me. Gonna be honest, pure coincidence. So when my scouts told me of a great warrior from the sky, I knew you had at last returned. Okay, um... Who are you precisely? Because seriously, I don't know. Yeah, sorry buddy, no idea. Your words are confusing. I recognise you. You're called Revan. You're the one who came before. You and Malik, the one who served you. You promised to slay our enemy. In exchange for our aid, you swore to destroy the elders and bring us their secrets. Are you saying this means nothing to you? I mean, I'm happy to do it. Just like, you know, who are the elders? Point me at them. I'm very good at killing. I will go and do it. But I don't actually know about said deal. And it worries me you've already got swords out. I believe you. I sense there's something different about you. Something has changed. You are not the same as you were before. Yet the power of magic, what you call the force, is within you still. You can still destroy the elders and fulfill your vow. Um, okay. Uh, could you fill me in on what the vow was, precisely? You vowed to kill the elders, bring us secret knowledge they protect. In exchange, we promise to use this lost knowledge to help you enter the Temple of the Ancients. Okay, so I might need to do this to get into that temple round the corner. 
gotcha. Okay, I'm willing to do this, but I'm going to need some details first, please. And uh, there we go. If you can't remember what's going on, you're going to need details. Yes, what the bloody hell is happening? So I arrived with Malik three years back. My scouts saw the ship plummet to the earth. They went to loot the crash site. So, okay, I didn't set up the shield. The shield's been here for 10 million years or whatever. They tried to take you prisoner. You unleashed your magic, what you call the force, upon them. And seeing your power, they bowed before you and brought you here to me. Okay, fair enough. And then I assume a deal was done. You took language from my skull. You put your language in ours. Wow, that's, that's a damn good trick right there. So... Okay, you were looking for something called uh, the Starforge. And the answers were in the Temple of the Ancients, but you couldn't get into the temple. The elders alone hold its secrets, guarding them with their very lives. Yes, again, what is an elder? The elders guard the ancient secrets. Within their compound is the knowledge of power and magic, including the knowledge of how to enter the temple itself. I've lost many warriors storming the gates of their compound, but they use weapons of light and fire against us, and not even our war beasts are strong enough to breach their defences. And your war beasts appear to be... Hang on, is that a Watson gibbet? The Terentatic or whatever? Because it might be, in which case, oh, they are pretty strong, yes. So sometimes we can capture an elder when they venture forth from their compound, and we have learnt something about them. That is how we know they guard the ancient secrets. But no matter what tortures we inflict upon them, they'll never reveal the secrets. They fear the knowledge they themselves guard, and will never willingly surrender it to us. Yeah, because if you learn how to, like, use magic or fire or whatever, you'll just kill them, I assume. And yeah, these guys don't know about the Disruptor Field. It predates them. At this point, it's just, you know, part of their mythology. Ships fall from the skies, you go and ransack the ships. Gotcha. In fact, the existence of ships at all is beyond you technologically. You don't understand how ships fly in the first place. So, okay, you guys have definitely regressed a bit from the days of the Starforge and being the builders and diddly diddly do. Then again, we did learn on Tatooine, yeah, there was some form of, like, plague. So this might be tied to that. Okay, so the compound is to the south, beyond the Temple of the Ancients, and uh, yes, we don't know too much about it, just a handful of tiny bits of information from Torture. Few in number, past exterior defences, uh, you should be able to slaughter them all. So, uh, okay, we just need to sneak around there like guns or whatever. Okay, so that gets me a thousand XP, and... Uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of surprised this wasn't a Doom Arena, because it seriously looked a lot like a Doom Arena. And also, there's just 10 million bins here, which I can just ransack, so... Ooh. Okay, you are... You're just handing over a lot of stuff here, aren't you? Right, well, this is... Well, this is nice. There's just... There's just a line of free stuff right here, including a Carbonite Projector. I don't know what that is, but it sounds badass. Oh yeah, that's superior to the infinite stun ray I've got on HK because uh, that does damage uh, and it does a paralysis for 9 seconds and even if the target saves, uh, they still get paralysed for 3 seconds which is enough time for me to get like, you know, uh, 150 damage on them uh, with just a quick speed burst attack. So, okay, that's, that's really good. That's so damn nice actually. Any chance I might be able to? No, I can't actually just, uh, you know, access party selection right now. So, uh, right, now I'm just here inside these guys' town. And for the moment, at least, they're not actually slaughtering me. So, uh, yeah, pretty basic in the way of uh, architecture and whatnot. Just somehow these guys have regressed from uh, empire across the entire galaxy. The, what do they call it? The... Uh, the Endless Empire? The Infinite Empire? I can't recall. But uh, yes, now they're just sort of uh, squatting in shacks by the sea. So fascinating stuff here. I'll tell you what though, they've got the right idea. There's just 10 million sun loungers, alright? They've got some beautiful, beautiful little, uh, yeah, shade against the sun. They just live on the beach. They chill out and relax all day. You know what? These guys, they've got the right flipping idea. And I also really approve of their very lax understanding of personal property law. Alright, this here, this is good stuff. Okay, we've also got a named lawmaster right here. And there was another named one right at the front door, though I can't get to him because these bastards are blocking my way. And obviously, uh, yes, it did just occur to me, uh, theoretically, uh, if there's going to be elders uh, who have actually got technology that you don't have, uh, 
The vast majority of your people might have regressed, but maybe not everybody. Maybe the elders are, are the Rakatar who didn't regress, the ones who still understand and utilize technology, and who view what's going on here probably with a bit of, uh, of sadness. So, okay, I would say, ladies and gentlemen, that is enough for now. Next time, we're going to be chatting to a couple of named individuals here in the Rakatar settlement, see if we can start filling in some blanks here, because yes, we know from Tatooine, these guys used to run the Infinite Empire, then there was some form of plague and loads of rebellions, but how would you go from a handful of rebellions that they were able to put down by nuking an entire planet to, yeah, I don't know how to make a thing fly, we just live in a hut by the beach. There's... Uh, there's a missing chapter in this story, and I'm guessing the Lawmaster might be able to fill us in, and maybe, indeed, uh, the Elders uh, even more so. So, uh, that will be coming up very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime, I've been John Suspen, many a true nerd, and this has been Knights of the Old Republic. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, wait, and flamethrower! 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 Okay, so this is... This is definitely morally questionable. The point where you start singing the flamethrower song, potentially, you've gone over the line.